We all know the old trope of the tinfoil hat-wearing conspiracy theorist who believes crazy things like the bomb was part of a security exercise. But the terror hysteria of the apartment bombings were used to justify Russian aggression in Chechnya and win public approval for a full-scale war. Russian troops entered Chechnya the next month. In 2001, attacks in New York and Washington were blamed on Al-Qaeda as a pretext for invading Afghanistan. In the months leading up to the event, American negotiators had warned Afghanistan's Taliban that they were interested in securing right-of-way for proposed pipeline projects, and the U.S. would achieve this with either a carpet of gold or a carpet of bombs. The Bush administration's first major national security directive, NSPD-9, a full-scale battle plan for the invasion of Afghanistan, including command and control, air and ground forces, and logistics, was drafted and sitting on the president's desk to be signed off on September 4, 2001 seven days before the 9-11 attacks. The invasion proceeded as planned in October. Naturally, mainstream commentators have to pretend that false flags and staged terror incidents are ludicrous flights of fancy that have no historical precedent. Unless they're talking about one of their enemies, like Russia, staging a false flag incident. Then it's perfectly acceptable. Number four. The CIA ran mind control experiments on unwitting Americans. Ever hear the theory that the government abducted people against their will and experimented on them to study mind control techniques and mind-altering chemicals? Well, it isn't a theory, it's a documented fact. The US government did run just such a program, dubbed Project MKUltra, and it was exposed in the 1970s. Or at least parts of it were. What we don't know about Project MKUltra and its affiliated sub-projects could probably fill several warehouses with books, but what we do know is voluminous and scary enough. The formerly top-secret program was as horrific as any dystopian fantasy ever devised, and is now openly acknowledged and documented. Even the Wikipedia article on the subject admits that the project was completely illegal, employed unwitting test subjects, and attempted to manipulate people's mental states and alter brain functions through the surreptitious administration of drugs, especially LSD and other chemicals, hypnosis, sensory deprivation, isolation, verbal and sexual abuse, and other forms of torture. Some aspects of the MK Ultra nightmare are relatively well known by now. One series of experiments, presided over by Sidney Gottlieb, involved administering LSD to unwitting Americans, including mental patients, prisoners, drug addicts, and prostitutes. This included Operation Midnight Climax, in which unsuspecting men were drugged and lured to CIA safe houses by prostitutes on the CIA payroll. Their sexual activity was monitored behind one-way mirrors and used to study the effect of sexual blackmail and the use of mind-altering substances in field operations. Another experiment, dubbed MKUltra Subproject 68, was overseen by the esteemed psychiatrist Dr. Ewan Cameron. This subproject involved Dr. Cameron using LSD, paralytic drugs, electroshock therapy, and drug-induced comas to attempt to wipe patients' memories and reprogram their psyche. When brought to light, the program was identified as an attempt to refine methods of medical torture for the purpose of extracting information from unwilling sources and condemned. Lawsuits regarding the blatantly illegal experimentation conducted by Cameron continue to this day. Yet despite CIA assurances that the program was scrapped in 1973, would the CIA ever lie to us? Documentary evidence continues to emerge that the program was far more extensive and horrific than the public was ever told. But simply pointing to the documented horrors that took place during the officially acknowledged period of the officially acknowledged program's officially acknowledged existence is enough to make even the most stubborn conspiracy deniers squirm in their seats. MKUltra would mostly be remembered for its drug experiments. I'm going to give you this cup that contains lysergic acid 100 microgram. Will you drink it? That's acid. by hallucinations, illusions, distortions of perception, and thinking. John Gittinger, recently retired chief psychologist for the CIA. We could disable a whole city by putting a very small amount in a water supply. Everything from prostitution studies to poisons to top secret weapons like the heart attack gun 
grabbed headlines with sensational accounts of the CIA's sketchy techniques. Have you brought with you um, some of those devices which would have enabled the CIA to use this poison for, we have indeed, for killing people? Good evening. The White House disclosed today that the CIA's drug CIA's testing drug program on program unsuspecting on Americans unsuspecting. had been more expensive than the agency had admitted. The CIA secretly funneled money through scores of research foundations, colleges, hospitals, and clinics, including a $375,000 grant through the Geschichte Research Fund here in Washington. The complex and compartmentalized management of such a large project through front groups and with the participation of countless agencies and institutions to carry out secret research, should be a testament to just how sophisticated and shadowy government science had become. There are names of doctors, there are names of officials, uh, there are names of former and present CIA officials who were involved, uh, names of hospitals. And uh, depending on uh, how you treat it, it could be sensational. Number five. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs! Female? You've probably seen the memes about it. It's one of the best known and most parodied conspiracy memes of recent years, constantly held up as an example of how utterly deranged and off-base online conspiracy theorists are. That turn the friggin' frogs gay! Do you understand that? Turn the friggin' frogs gay! Do you understand that? After all, Everyone knows that chemicals in the water aren't turning the frogs gay. They're turning them female. Reports began to emerge on this phenomenon a decade ago, like this one from Live Science. Pesticide turns male frogs into females, which points out that scientific research is demonstrating that a commonly used pesticide known as atrazine can turn male frogs into females that are successfully able to reproduce. Atrazine, it turns out, is a weed killer used primarily on corn crops and can cause sexual abnormalities in frogs, such as hermaphroditism, having both male and female sex organs. The study from 2010 further discovered that atrazine's effects are long-lasting and can influence reproduction in amphibians. The results suggest that atrazine could have potentially harmful effects on populations of amphibians, animals that are already experiencing a global decline. And despite the steady flow of funny memes this observation has generated, this is no laughing matter. As study author Tyrone B. Hayes of the University of California, Berkeley explains, the study suggests that atrazine, which is banned in Europe, could have potentially harmful effects on populations of amphibians, animals that are already experiencing a global decline. Though there's no mention of the frog's sexual preferences, pesticides are admittedly bending the genders of amphibians. And to top it all off, since atrazine interferes with the production of the sex hormone estrogen present in people and frogs, the findings could have implications for humans as well. But it isn't just atrazine. Over the last century, mass manufacturing of plastics and other products have meant that our environment is now awash in chemicals called endocrine disruptors, which, a growing body of research suggests, interferes with sperm production and may impair human fertilization. These chemicals may be one of the reasons that sperm counts are undergoing a dramatic drop in developed countries and other issues with men's health, including testicular cancer, undescended testes, and low sperm count. That's actually a pretty big deal. But I guess if you want to make trendy hipsters laugh, just tell them these completely admitted scientific facts about the pesticide that are wreaking untold havoc on our environment, and then do your best impression of a loudmouth Texan ranting about gay frogs. You'll have your friends in stitches. Just don't say it's a theory. In conclusion, in truth, there are many more examples of conspiracy theories that turned out to be true. From the US government knowingly injecting poor black sharecroppers with syphilis, to the CIA heart attack gun, to the anonymous letter that the FBI wrote to Martin Luther King urging him to kill himself. So what other not-so-theoretical conspiracy theories do you know of? Let us know in the comments below. There has never been a conspiracy in this country.